trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Our top story at noon, total ruin left behind today for some buildings on the Mystic Seaport after a four alarm fire last night. This is what is left behind there. The massive fire started sometime after 10 last night. First responders reporting to Washington Street and Cottrell Street. The flames could be seen for miles. And according to the Groton Fire Department, multiple buildings were on fire, some of them collapsing. Mutual aid from surrounding communities called in to help douse those flames. There's a, um, a parking lot to the, the north side of the building, which I think saved a few other buildings because the wind was blowing quite hard. And it looked like that parking lot left enough room for the flames not to get any other buildings. The Westerly Fire Department was part of that mutual aid response. An East Providence police officer and two others are recovering after a crash at a busy intersection Sunday night. Police tell ABC6 that an officer was responding to an emergency call and that crash occurred at the intersection of Pawtucket and Taunton Avenues. Three cars were involved in total, two drivers and the officer transported to the hospital with minor injuries. Police say the officer did have his lights and sirens on. The accident remains under investigation. A Warwick woman is due in court accused of stabbing her boyfriend's ex-girlfriend and her mom. Cranston police say 23-year-old Shania, uh, Shania Vincent rather, of Warwick slashed two women with a pocket knife after showing up outside their home on Alto Street around 11 Sunday morning. The women told police it started out as an argument when the victim's ex-boyfriend and his new girlfriend were in the car outside their home. And Cranston City Council will vote on a resolution opposing bringing pallet housing villages to the Pastore Center. Governor McKee and his administration proposed a few months ago to bring more housing to the homeless in Cranston. Since then, Mayor Hopkins and other city council members have spoken out against the idea, stating that Cranston has done enough to help the homeless, adding it's time for other places in the state to step up. The council will vote on calling upon McKee to withdraw his consideration of Cranston. That meeting is set for 7 p.m. And now to new details on a bank robbery on Martha's Vineyard. A second suspect has been arrested in connection to that island bank robbery. Authorities say 39-year-old Omar Johnston of New Hampshire was arrested following a traffic stop in Connecticut Sunday. On November 17th, three people wearing masks, gloves, with handguns rushed into the bank and tied the tellers up before fleeing in a stolen vehicle. Another suspect, Mikkel Jones, was arrested in connection with the robbery last week. Police are still looking for that third suspect. And now to an ABC6 follow-up in Providence. A promotion ceremony will take place today at the Providence Police Department. At 1 o'clock, the event will promote Major Oscar Perez to Deputy Chief and Captain Timothy O'Hara to Major. This comes after the retirement of Deputy Chief Thomas Verde, who retired last week after more than 35 years of service to the city. The Norfolk County DA's office is now identifying the victim in a deadly pedestrian crash in Foxboro over the weekend. The accident taking place Saturday morning near Cocasset and Oak Streets. The DA's office says 57-year-old Michael Shaw was hit and killed. Investigators believe he was jogging when he was hit by a car. Police say the driver, a 35-year-old Foxboro resident, did stay at the scene and has been cooperating with police. The accident remains under investigation. And now to the weather as we take a live look outside right now with our sky cam. A beautiful day with some sunshine out there. We've got Nick in today with a look at our forecast. Hi, Nick. Hey, Doreen, and hello to you at home. Uh, we had a band of clouds roll through Rhode Island in the last few hours with a secondary cold front. So now that that's pushing south, a northwest wind has kicked in and the cooler air is on the way. It's a beautiful day, though. Check it out. 52 and the dew point at 37. That dew point will be dropping slowly. That northwesterly wind bringing in the drier air. Notice all across southern New England temperatures are generally in the low 50s. So it's a really nice day for late November. You see a couple of little uh, sprinkles there as that uh, the cloud deck moved through. You can see that clearing line as it moved from Worcester down uh, towards uh, Providence. And now it's uh, still cloudy down at the seacoast, but uh, we're certainly getting uh, the clearing that's coming in in just the next hour or two. Few clouds off to the north and west as well, puffy cumulus, but those will dissipate with the setting sun. So we're looking at a clear, uh, mostly clear evening. as so we go from three o'clock to six o'clock, temperatures falling to the low to mid 40s, and we get down into the upper 30s. If you have plans mid to late evening, 
Uh, this is what it'll look like, 39 in Providence at 10 o'clock. And then tomorrow morning, we'll wake up to a chilly 30 or 32 degrees, and it'll be frost on the windshield, perhaps for many of you tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll warm up only into the 40s tomorrow, but it's a sunny day. Rain is on the way midweek. We'll talk more about that in the seven-day forecast coming up. All right, Nick, thank you. Well, it is the busiest online shopping day of the year, Cyber Monday. And that means it's a hectic day for Amazon workers in Fall River. ABC6 News reporter Natalie Nori is at the warehouse right off Route 24 to show us around inside. Hi, Natalie. Dorian, I have never been in a warehouse this size, over a million square feet here. And let me try to show you and maybe even explain to you where we are in the shipment process. You can see all these packages on the conveyor belts right now. That machine with the red light on it is actually creating labels for these packages. But these lines all funnel down into one main line where these packages end up coming down to this conveyor belt. And they're physically sorted out into the designated trucks that they will be shipped out on. But staff was telling us the volume that we're seeing right now is the result of a record breaking weekend of online sales. Cyber Monday, the busiest online shopping day of the year, in full swing at the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Fall River. This is where the online orders are sent and the first stop of the delivery process is handled. The general manager telling ABC6 some of the hot deals shoppers are buying into this year. I see a lot of vacuum cleaners and this year we're seeing a ton of kitchen appliances which is pretty typical for a Cyber Monday. This year, Miller says, is a record-breaking year. The Fall River location expects to ship over 80,000 packages out this Cyber Monday. And that is just about double what we would normally do. Uh, about a month ago, we were shipping about half that. So how does a fulfillment center prepare for such high volumes ahead of a major online sale? With 1,200 employees from around the area, officials told ABC6 that everyone on staff is trained to understand customer shipments. In the months leading up to Cyber Monday, we focus on bringing in inventory, receiving and, and filling our shelves. And then today and tomorrow, we send everyone over to start pick and pack and ship customer orders. And the general manager also told us that even though today is Cyber Monday, the volume and the amount of packages that we're seeing on these conveyor belts will probably keep up for the rest of the week. But for now, reporting live from the Amazon warehouse in Fall River, Natalie Nori, ABC6 News. All right, Natalie, thank you. Busy over there. I knew at noon today, the Cranston Street Armory is opening up to the public. The iconic building in Providence's West End will be the site of World Cup watch parties this December. People can come and watch the quarterfinals, semifinals, and championship match on a 40-foot screen inside the drill hall. It's free and family-friendly, open to all ages. Local food trucks and drinks will be available to purchase. The Army's been closed to the public for over 30 years. So to come here on ABC 6 News at noon, lucky to be alive. We have details on the rescue of a cruise ship passenger lost at sea for hours after falling overboard. And later, the massive protests in China over strict COVID regulations, some even calling for the president to resign.
Back now with a cruise ship miracle. An American rescued after falling off the ship, managing to survive for hours lost at sea. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. U.S. Coast Guard video shows the incredible moments a cruise ship passenger was spotted by rescuers treading water and trying to stay afloat without a life jacket after falling overboard. The 28-year-old man frantically waving his arms for help after spending 15 hours at sea. You know, to be out in the middle of the ocean uh, treading water for upwards of 15 hours is simply incredible. His sister reporting him missing on Thursday, saying she hadn't seen him since 11 p.m. Wednesday. They were vacationing with their family on the Carnival Valor cruise ship for Thanksgiving and on their way to Cozumel, Mexico. They really started to make announcements. They were asking for him to report back to guest services, and it was coming across like every 15, 20 minutes, down to the point where like people started to notice. With no word from him, Carnival flagging the U.S. Coast Guard. At that point, the Coast Guard entered the distress phase and began marshalling um, our resources in an attempt to get them on scene as soon as possible. Rescuers searching by air and sea, the ship even retracing its route. There was a potential of over 7,000 miles of ocean we had to search. Uh, which is roughly the same size as Massachusetts. Several hours after the search began, the missing passenger eventually spotted by a merchant ship about 20 miles south of Southwest Pass, Louisiana. After the passenger was hoisted out of the water, he showed signs of hypothermia, according to the Coast Guard, was taken to the hospital and reported to be in stable condition. Meanwhile, the cruise ship continued its journey to Cozumel. Rita Roy, ABC News, New York. And still to come on ABC 6 News at noon, getting a new name. Why the World Health Organization is changing the name of monkeypox amid a dramatic decrease in case incidents. Well, monkeypox now has a new name. The World Health Organization says it will now be referred to as Mpox. Monkeypox was named in 1970, a decade after the virus that causes the disease was discovered in captive monkeys. But scientists were concerned that the name could create a stigma that would steer people away from testing and vaccination. The WHO says both names will be used for the next year while the term monkeypox is phased out. And now to China, where thousands are taking to the streets to protest strict COVID lockdowns. Some of the demonstrators even calling for Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Communist Party to step down. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. Growing anger over China's strict zero COVID policy, sending thousands into the streets and rare mass protests across major cities. 
the demonstrators clashing with police over the weekend, demanding an end to COVID restrictions. The zero COVID policy um, has been a disaster. Um, both economically uh, and politically inside China. Some of the demonstrators chanting, we want democratic rule of law, we want freedom of speech, a brazen act of defiance as some call for President Xi Jinping and his Communist Party to step down. Many of the protesters holding up blank pieces of paper, a symbol against censorship. It was this deadly apartment fire last week that triggered the demonstrations. Residents claim barriers put up due to COVID restrictions blocked fire trucks from getting to the victims, something the Chinese government has denied. Ten people died, including a three-year-old child. It is unimaginable that they will try to resolve the issue by backing down. Overnight, the government instead doubling down on its zero COVID policy, writing in a newspaper commentary, quote, facts have fully proved that each version of the prevention and control plan has withstood the test of practice. Meanwhile, some concessions on the ground amid the protests. Aramchi city officials now easing lockdowns in low risk neighborhoods. Beijing also announcing it's lifting lockdowns in 75 neighborhoods and will no longer block access to apartment compounds. Beyond China, there are also global concerns about the impact of the strict COVID policy on supply chains. One analysis estimates the Chinese lockdowns have led to a 35 to 40 percent drop in iPhone 14 Pro inventory as we begin the holiday shopping season. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And uh, it's time for weather. And we've got, you know, a cold front that moved through. It's, it's sunny, actually, in northern and central Rhode Island, but southern Rhode Island still getting uh, a few clouds right now that are pushing through. 50 degrees right now in the center of Ma Massachusetts, 52 in Providence. Just about everywhere you go in southern New England, it is right around that 50-degree mark. Uh, here are your weather headlines for you. Dry through Wednesday morning, and uh, we are looking at uh, the sunshine to be with us tomorrow but then the clouds come back on wednesday rain returns wednesday afternoon and evening and then it's dry and sunny again thursday and friday every couple of days we're getting a rain system that's coming in here that's the weather pattern right now and we look at the satellite and radar we see a little strip of clouds off to the north and west uh, those are puffy fair weather clouds that are forming from the the cooler air coming in aloft but as the sun sets these all these clouds will dissipate tonight and we are looking at a clear sky over us as the cold front that pushed through, still making its way right around Newport right now. It's pushing off to the south. And as it does, the northwesterly wind bringing in the drier air tonight. It will clear our sky tonight. It'll be quite chilly tomorrow morning, frosty cold near 30. Here's the high, high pressure. And that is sliding along the eastern seaboard and it moves right on top of us by Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday night. So the wind that we experience this evening and this afternoon, that diminishes tomorrow morning and especially during the afternoon tomorrow. But then it's going to pick up again from the other direction, from the southerly direction on the back side of this high and ahead of the cold front. We've got a, a lot of mild air that's going to push in and with that, some showers coming in ahead of this cold front. This front could move through Wednesday night with a rattle as uh, some wind comes in as this system slides on through. Behind it, it's windy and cold, and that comes in here on Thursday. So overnight lows tonight on either side of 30 degrees. We'll have a frosty start to you Tuesday. Sunshine bringing us to 45 tomorrow. We'll call it 99% sunshine. There'll be a couple of clouds out there, but for the most part, it's a sunny day for your Tuesday. All right, Wednesday. Uh, we've got the afternoon rain, so maybe a little bit of a sunrise Wednesday morning, but the clouds come in, they thicken up during the morning. Midday looks dry, but then as we go through the afternoon, uh, it becomes showery and rainy by Wednesday evening. Thursday and Friday, we dry it out, cool it off here, and the next uh, rain comes in on Saturday. So every couple of days, just keep the umbrella handy. Doreen? All right, Nick, thank you so much. Still to come here on ABC6 News at noon, Jay Leno returns to the stage after his burn accident. And Wakanda Forever proves untouchable once again at the weekend box office. We'll be right back.
In entertainment news today, just two weeks after suffering burn injuries in a garage fire, comedian Jay Leno returned to the stage Sunday night. The former NBC Tonight Show host performed in front of a sold-out crowd at the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, California. Leno, an avid car collector, was burned in a gasoline fire while working underneath one of his vehicles earlier this month. The comedian underwent two surgeries to treat significant burns on his face and hands. At the box office, holiday travelers went to Wakanda. The Black Panther sequel, Wakanda Forever, took in the most money Thanksgiving weekend, an estimated 64 million bucks in North America. The film's third weekend at number one. Disney's animated adventure, Strange World, grabbed second place, opening to a paltry estimated 18.6 million. And one of, that is one of the worst animated openings in modern day Disney history. The Knives Out sequel, Glass Onion, finished in third. It heads to Netflix next week. Best believe I'm still bejeweled when I walk in the room. Beep. And people continue to meet Taylor Swift at midnight. Her album Midnight's is number one for a fourth week on the Billboard 200 album chart. Her song Antihero is number one on the Hot 100 for the fourth week in a row. And so to come here on the news at noon, the trees are trimmed, the halls are decked, the White House is ready for Christmas. Details on this year's theme. Plus, Nick has another look at your afternoon forecast right after this. Well, the White House is ready for Christmas. The theme for this year's celebration, We the People. It was chosen by First Lady Jill Biden to show that despite different traditions, Americans all believe in optimism, possibility, and unity. The White House's Blue Room will hold the Christmas tree, which, by the way, is nearly 19 feet tall. There are more than 83,000 lights to decorate 77 trees, displays, garlands, and wreaths all throughout the White House. Doesn't it look amazing? Wow. Uh, they had about 150 volunteers who came <laughs> in to help decorate. I'd like them all now to come to my house. I, I know. And help me I decorate. need some volunteers, <laughs> too. Done about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you strange. know, it, it's going to be a pretty good holiday decorating weather tomorrow okay. for outdoor decorating, you know, sunshine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it'll start chilly, 30 degrees tonight, starlit and frosty. Uh, but then tomorrow we, we do make it to uh, 45 degrees, uh, 45 to 48 degrees tomorrow. And uh, Wednesday's mild too, but the showers come in in the afternoon. Then we dry it out for a couple of days. Thursday's the coolest day 
in that seven day forecast. All right, we keep going back and forth, back yeah. and forth this week. Just got to keep that umbrella handy every right. couple of days. Okay? Be ready. Keep yep. us at our toes. Thank you. Mistletoes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first at four. Have a great day, everybody.